Hello everyone, Jim Staley, Passion for Truth Ministries, and welcome to this broadcast. This is a follow-up to the broadcast that I just did sharing with you guys what the Father's been showing with me as I'm getting up at 5.30 in the morning. And I promised you at the end of that broadcast that I would share with you the acronym that I use to stay and pray and to pray longer and with more vitality and more power and uh, to really get in that zone. It's an acronym called PRAY and that's what we're going to learn right now. So get out your pens and paper because the Father is in the business of transforming people. He's in the business of radically transforming people and he does that through two things. He sets it up through the foundation of prayer, which enters into a spirit of faith, and then he does that through obedience. And that's what this channel, that's what this ministry, Passion for Truth Ministries is all about, is helping you transform your life and to make you more successful in him and in the rest of your life and all of your relationships, both vertically and horizontally. And I'm telling you, the answer to everything is simple prayer. So let's dive in and let me share with you in just a few, a few short minutes exactly what I do. There's lots of different ways that you can pray, lots of different ways that you can uh, enter into the Holy of Holies as you will. But every day, this, whenever I get into warrior mode and God calls me into a place of total atmosphere change, that's why I wore this, short, this shirt. I've worn this shirt many times, but creating the atmosphere for your life first starts with creating the atmosphere uh, with him. And that atmosphere with him is initiated through prayer. Like seeds that are in the ground, ladies and gentlemen, that do not uh, come forth without water. It doesn't matter how much uh, uh, seed you put in the ground. If you don't water it, it will not ever come out of the ground, much less ever produce fruit. And there's a lot of people that can get in the ground, get that seed in the ground, which is their dream. It's their vision. It's their goal. Uh, but then they, they, they water it right away and then it pops out of the ground and they get that, that temporary success. And then they stop watering it. They stop giving it that nutrients. It's like somebody whose desire is, Hey, I want to lose 20 pounds uh, in the next 60 days. And that's my vision. And they know their why because they want to please their spouse or they want to they want to feel good about themselves again. They want to wake up with a little bit more a pep in their step. And they get to the gym and they work out for three or four days. They see the first couple of pounds of, of, of fruit and then they literally just begin to go back into old patterns. That's called making a New Year's resolution last every bit of about 48 hours. So two weeks at the most, if you, if, if you know what I mean. So we don't want that kind of success in our spiritual life. We want absolutely transformative success. And if you want transformative success, you have to have a plan in place to do that. It's your path. It's your goal. So a lot of people are good at their goal. They know where the end zone is, but they have absolutely no idea how to get there. Okay. Enough of that. Let's get into the acronym itself and let's discover how to pray. People ask me all the time, Jim, how is it possible that you can pray for hours? How do you do it? I, after 15 minutes, I'm completely run out of everything to pray for. I've prayed for every flower in my yard. I've prayed for my grass. I've prayed for my, my grandkids and my wife. Like what, what else do I pray for? When I give you this acronym, and I've done this to thousands and tens of thousands of people through the Nehemiah challenge. If you go all the way back to PFT 1.0, you remember the Nehemiah challenge. It transformed people's life over what I'm about to share with you. So here is the acronym. And I promise you, you'll be able to pray for as long as I probably can. Uh, because it just puts it into a structure. Again, we can pray. All we can say, I want to pray, but we got to know how to pray. So teach this to your children. It will ra revolutionize their life. Okay. So here we go. How do we pray? The very first thing that we need to do if we're going to pray is we need to learn how to praise. So in the acronym of PRAY, which is P-R-A-Y, the letter P is PRAY. So I start off all the time, and one of the very first things that I will do is I will pray. I, will, I mean, praise. I will begin to just praise Him. I will praise Him, and I will glorify His name. And, and I'll just say, Father, I just glorify your name. I praise you. I thank you so much for everything that you mean to me. Thank you for the opportunity to come before you. Thank you for your doors being open 24-7. I just thank him and thank him and thank him. And, and it's, I'm telling you, you're so 
your life is so blessed. I don't care where you're at. Someone has a worse off life, right? So no matter how bad your life got, I can promise you at a certain point when I was sitting in the hole underground in a seven by nine foot cell with a guy that wanted to kill me and guards that were encouraging him when I was in the shower to, when I came out to kill me, right? And they were, weren't feeding me and I lost 17 pounds in 84 days. I can promise you my bad, my, my day was probably worse than your worst day. Uh, at that time. And there's crazy, there's people that have worse days than I had. So there's lots for us to be thankful for. And you can spend a lot of time, ladies and gentlemen, praying. You could spend a lot of time in praise alone. Praise should be a considerable part of your prayer time. It, you could pray for, you could praise the Lord for, for, for an hour straight. Just think of all the blessings that you have. The fact that you're breathing right now, 165,000 people die every day. There is a lot to be thankful for in the fact that you're breathing and, and the fact that God, that you even know the one true God, that you have children, that, that you might have a best friend. Uh, thank him. Even if you don't have a best friend, thank him for the ones by faith that you do. Sometimes I spend 10 minutes. God, thank you by faith for all of the prayers that I have asked for you to answer by faith. I thank you, God, that I have, I have defeated this struggle in my life, even though I'm in the middle of the struggle. So I enter into a spiritual realm of, of faith. And so that's something that you can look at as well. Okay. The second thing that we can do after we praise, so now we've got P is praise, R, what do you think R is out there? Put it in the, put it in the chat right now. Uh, if you know what R is, let's see what you guys, what you guys come up with and see what kind of, of uh, comments that you guys have. What do you think R is? P is praise. Here's what R is. R is, here we go, drum roll. It is repent. That's right. So R is repent. This is the opportunity where, well, yeah, you said re, uh, request. That was a good guest. Very good. Uh, you said, somebody, somebody said repent. So repent. This is your opportunity to spend the time to truly humble yourself before God. Give yourself the opportunity to abase yourself. I'm telling you, you could, sp listen, Everyone has sinned and fallen short of God's glory, right? Romans 3.23. And if you just go three more chapters to the verse, you find 6.23 that says, and the wages of sin is death. So like that, that's, you know, but there's a big comment that says, but the free gift of God is eternal life. So the good news is there is forgiveness for our sin. Uh, but what we need to do before that is we need to repent. This is your opportunity to come clean before God. Father, I just come before you. And you know what I do? I repent even in the morning, this morning, 538, I was down in my office praying and I said, Father, I repent that I am eight minutes late. My, my, my alarm went off at 530 uh, and I should have been down here at 531. I was down here at 538. Forgive me for being tired right now. Now you might say, Jim, that's, that's silly. But you know what? I can promise you when deer hunting season comes up and all you hunter uh, husbands that are out there, you know, that we get up at 3.30 in the morning and I mean, we jump out of bed into our camouflage because we can't wait to get into our stand. It's opening day or whatever your thing is, we get excited. But when we want to wake up at 5.30 in the morning to pray, it's, oh God, how am I going to do this, Lord? I'm just, uh, I come before you and we just snore right back into bed, right? So we need to get to a place where we're as excited to meet with him as he is to meet with us. And I'm telling you that comes from practice, just like working out, it comes through practice. And so repenting is an area that's super important. Go through your life, discover everything. And in this process, by the way, this is really important. Most people don't do this. Write this down. This is really, really, really important. In the process of prayer, you must get into the prophetic part. And most people don't know how to do this. This is what I do. It makes my prayer life highly successful because I'm letting him be a part of it. So most of us, when we pray, it becomes a one-way street where we are praying to the Father and we think, oh yeah, that's exactly what Matthew chapter five says. Our Father who art in heaven, I pray like this, pray to God. That's great. But I have found the most successful prayers is when I allow the Holy Spirit to partner with me and begin to tell me what to pray. 
Because I admit right up front, Father, I repent. I don't even know what to pray for. Sometimes I don't want to pray. And you know what my prayer becomes? Father God, I just give you my mind, will, and emotions. I'm not in a good mood right now. I don't want to do this right now. I'm hangry right now. I haven't had my coffee right now. Or, you know, uh, my wife said this to me that was mean. Or I said this to her that was mean. We got in an argument. Or my, my child didn't do this. Or life didn't go my way. Or somebody took my parking spot. Holy cow, that's a big deal. I've got a big uh, pickup truck. It's not easy for me to find a parking spot. All those things are true, by the way, that have happened in my life in the last week. And so what, sometimes I just admit it before God. I don't want to do, and I want to divine assistance him. I want him to come into my world. So I'll say, Father, uh, I'm repenting before you, but I want you to bring in my mind the things I need to repent of. Just bring it before me, God, because I'm not very good at, at, at admitting that I'm wrong uh, sometimes, and I need you to help me. And you'll be shocked at what will come into your head, ladies and gentlemen. It will just come in your head. And you will begin to repent for things. You begin to pray for things that you never even thought of before. So yes, you might only have 15 minutes of prayer inside of you, but I promise you that if you ask the Holy Spirit to come into that moment, come into that room and begin to fill you with what really needs to happen in that prayer, you, what will come out of you, you won't even, some of you never heard from God. You won't even know you're hearing from God. You'll think that it's just thoughts coming into your mind and it's Holy Spirit downloading divine assistance to bring you into the throne room to transform you and to shore up some of the covenant walls that have been breached because some of you have walls in your life that have been breached and you don't even know it. So there's covenants you've made, oaths that you've made, whether it be a marriage covenant, a covenant with your kids, covenant promises that you made that you broke, that you don't even know the seriousness of breaking those and you need to get back into covenant. That starts with prayer. It starts with absolutely unadulterated, unfiltered, powerful, intentional, uncomfortable, get out of bed, Put your jammies on, get into a different place that's unco and get into a position of prayer. Praise and repent. So let's go to the next one because that's what we want to do. We want to learn this acronym so that we can, we can absolutely discover the power that we've been missing by connecting in our umbilical cord of the, uh, of the inner man into the heavenly realm. So first is praise, second is repent, and the third is A, and that's ask for others, okay? So third is to ask for others. So we haven't even touched ourselves yet. You'll be 45 minutes, I promise you. Guys, listen to me. Especially those out there that, that have kind of a gift of gab a little bit, you, you will shock yourself. I have one person uh, email me back years ago after I shared this, and said, you know, the most I could ever pay was pray was about 15 or 20 minutes. Me and my wife, we came and we we took we we wrote it down and we got on our on our knees and we began to pray and we didn't even know it was four hours later before they finished. Four hours they prayed. And that's how they went through their acronym. God began to just highlight things. Listen, if you can pray for four hours straight and not even know it. You've touched the hem of the garden garment and the bleeding in your life begins to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, can I just share with you what Holy Spirit just gave me right there? You saw it. Some of you already caught it. Yeshua was walking through the streets and he felt the power come out of him. How? Someone came up with so much faith. All they knew was if I could touch the hem of the garment, I will absolutely be transformed. I know I will be healed. She knew that the, the, the Old Testament said there was healings in the tzitzit. The healing was in the wings, as they called it. The, the little strings, the tzitzit to hang down from his outer garment as a rabbi, they knew if I could just touch that, the power of God would heal me. I'm here to tell you, if you have that much faith that you can pray and you can be intentional and you can get uncomfortable and you say, God, I'm doing this. I'm creating a prayer covenant. I want to, I want to change my scenario. Do you know what chaos is? Do you know what insanity is? It's having the same goal. And, and, and never reaching it and never changing the formula to get to your goal. So it becomes insanity. And some of you live in constant insanity and you wonder why you are never going to be successful and why you're not successful because you're not changing the formula. So let me ask you when someone says, oh man, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do to be, do this. I'll say, how's it working out for you? Because you're not successful. And if you're not successful in an area, it's like a guy that's making 30000 a year that wants to make 150000 a year, and he's getting advice from people that make 40000 a year. That's insanity. They don't know how to do it. They're not doing it. Find someone that's successful. I'm here to tell you that the success that God has given me in my life, and not in every area, I, there are areas that right now I am warring in the spirit for because I am unsuccessful in certain categories of my life because I am a firstborn alpha male perfectionist and I want perfection in every area of my life and, it wants, and I want to be right with God. 
and there's certain areas that I struggle with just like you, and I know the answer is get on my knees, okay? And so the, the Father has taught me that if before you get on your knees for yourself, first you better praise him. When you get in the, into the throne room, the first thing you do is bow before that king and tell him how wonderful he is. Second is you need to repent. Oh, king, just in case you decide to pull out your gavel uh, and put judgment on me and then uh, off with my head, I'm going to repent of everything I've ever done. It just makes sense. And then thirdly is to ask the request, not for yourself. Be like Queen Esther when she went into K King Asarius and, 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 and after she praised him uh, and, and, and she bowed before him, then she made request for her people. And so now you can request for everybody around you. Start with the President of the United States, for God knows how much prayer uh, he needs in that position. All of your governors, all of your those that are in authority, police officers, firefighters, like go outside of your own box for crying out loud. Why do we always have to stay inside our own box? Why do we only care about the things and the people that are in our neck of the woods? How about we pray for people in Africa, in Kenya? Uh, pray for the 30 pastors that I teach every Wednesday night that are in India that are, are just babies in learning the front of the book. They, they can barely understand my language through a translator, uh, and they need to understand this. They have capability of impacting thousands of people in their area. Pray for the 15 children that we have an orphanage in a different part of India that we just started. These 15 ki of ki children, these 15 kids need need the Lord. They need uh, the, the people around them to love them. There's so many things that you can pray for before you even get to your personal family uh, to pray for them. If, you have, if you're married out there today, I can assure you, you probably have marriage problems because there's no way that you can be married and not have some sort of problem in your marriage, even a, a marriage problem that may not be with your partner, but it may be combined together. Maybe it's financial problems, whatever. Before you have any kind of complaint, pray for them. There's no faster way to make someone change than to get in the, roar, the war room and pray to the Heavenly Father with emotion and say, Father, my spouse is treating me unfairly. I'm praying for them, God, that you would open their eyes, that you would do. And I'm talking about not praying. I'm talking about war prayer. I'm talking about intentional, absolutely travailing prayer. Do you hear what I'm saying? So there's a difference, okay? It, it, I can talk like this, and I can teach you the acronym of prayer. But how much more attention does it get when you put passion behind the words? God hears the intentional, passionate prayers. This is how the one that gave the, the last widow's might, he heard her prayer. She gave everything she had. You see, the problem in America today, we don't give everything anything. There's no sacrifice. Christians are lazy. So we wonder why God doesn't answer our prayer. We don't give out. Of, we give out of our abundance. We don't give out a sacrifice. Most people take and never give at all. And then on top of that, we request God to answer our prayers when we shoot them up as we're driving to the mall or wherever you're going. But try getting up before the sun comes up or try doing something that's uncomfortable, that's outside of your zone and say, God, I'm willing to fast. I'm willing to pray because the effective prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Are you righteous for God to hear your prayer? Because the ineffective prayer of an unrighteous man availeth nothing. So let us get righteous. And the fastest way for you to get righteous, by the way, here's one for you. Write it down. The fastest way for you to get righteous is not for you to get righteous. It's to understand righteousness. And the first step to understanding righteousness is to understand that you can never be righteous enough. So the first prayer that God will ever hear is the prayer of salvation. It's the prayer that says, hey, uh, God, I can't do this, but, but your son Yeshua did this. I'm going to bank on his righteousness until my righteousness gets to a place where you can actually hear my prayers. I'm going to plead the blood of Christ in my whole entire life. Amen? Amen. All right, so pray for others. So now we have, we have praised, we've repented, we have asked for others, and lastly... Of course, the Y stands for yourself. And this is where you have the opportunity to come before the Holy Spirit and say, Father, I need to know what it is that I need. See, don't immediately just go into praying for yourself. 
This is a huge mistake people make to pray for themselves and they don't even ask the Father what their needs are. So you might be praying for something that you don't even actually really want. As a matter of fact, let me prove this to you. <laughs> let me prove this in kind of a funny way. How many of you can go all the way back to your high school years and you remember that boy or that girl that you absolutely wanted to marry? And I mean, you were convinced that you that you were to marry them and, and that's what you wanted to do. But at the end of the day, uh, 20 years later, you look back and you go, oh my goodness, Father God, thank you so much for not letting me marry that man, not letting me marry that woman, right? There's an old country song that says, thank God for unanswered prayers, all right? So this is the point of what I'm saying is that it's really critical that we make sure that we say, Father, what do you want me to pray? Again, bring the Holy Spirit if you're not under, if you're not really familiar with the prophetic, the prophetic is nothing nothing other than simultaneously allowing yourself to channel the Holy Spirit while you are in communication with Him. It's like having one earbud in. Okay, so I've got earbuds in right now, right? So it's like if I take one out, and I got one in, I can hear my right in my right ear. I can hear uh, what's coming out of my speakers. Uh, and, 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 and the other one, I can hear everything else that's around me. So if someone was speaking into the, my left ear and my right ear was someone else, I could simultaneously hear both at the same time. This is the concept of walking into the prophetic is that your entire life gets to a place where you're so used to listening to the Holy Spirit while at the same time hearing, uh, uh, speaking back to him. So, and this is what we want to do. So, uh, now we get to why it's yourself. You can begin to pray for yourself and, and you begin to go through everything that is inside of you that needs to change. And you ask God to give you the strength to overcome this, this, and this, and this. And, and I'm telling you, you need to start with father. I don't know how to pray. Teach me how to pray. Help me to be a better prayer warrior. Help me to care more about others. You see, right above us in this acronym, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Let me show you the very last one here. When you get to this acronym, guys, the very last one is yourself. So what is right above you is others. If you focus most of your life on pushing others up, you will find yourself being pulled up by everybody else that you're pushing up. Because people want to be around those that are encouraging them. The more that you're pushing people up, Father God will push you up, right? Because he takes humility to push others up. So why do you think I do this? Why do you think I'm up right now at 9.37 p.m. in the evening doing a live broadcast on how to pray is because I care about you guys. I want you to, I want to share the excitement at 5.30 in the morning to know that there are thousands of people around the world that are on their knees. They're not just praying. They are, they're intentional praying. They're, they're praying with, with zeal like warriors and, and they're travailing over their spouses and their the relationships and, and the things that they're not, that aren't going well, they by faith, doggone it, we're going to change that by faith. I refuse enemy to let you win this war. You're not going to win. Put that in, in the comments right now. If you have a situation in your life where the devil is beating you, put it in the comments. You're not going to win. Devil, you're not going to win. You see, you have to state the obvious. Say it out of your mouth because doubt and fear will creep in and then the enemy will begin to take over. So tell yourself, devil, you're not going to win. As a matter of fact, put this in the comments, you're already defeated. You're already defeated. The only difference between you're not going to win and you're defeated is your understanding that it's already happened. And then number two, you need a plan of action to bring that already defeated reality into your reality. Because in the reality of God, the devil's already defeated. He's scared out of his mind. He's smelling like sulfur already from hell, which he came. He's going back and he doesn't want you to know about it. What you've got to do is figure out how to pull heaven into your reality. And that's what I'm here to do. That's what I'm here to do. That's as a pastor, as a shepherd, as a minister, as a Bible teacher, and a historical guy, this is my passion is to help you be successful using biblical principles. But most of us are not successful because we don't know the patterns. We don't know the principles. We don't know the steps on how to get there. I'm not a guru on getting there. I'm trying to get there myself, but I want to share with you the things that have caused me to be successful. The people around me to be successful is these simple steps. So pray 
is simple. Praise, repent, it's ask for your, uh, 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 for others, and it's ask for yourself. When you get to the, pl- the place, ladies and gentlemen, where everything that you do in life, you do nothing without prayer. As a matter of fact, Yahweh says, I'm not going to do what? I'm not going to do anything without telling it to the prophets. What if we did that with God? That would be called prayer. So technically, God doesn't do anything through reverse prayer. I just made that up. That's a coin phrase. Uh, you can't use it without permission. Probably wouldn't, wouldn't want to because it's pretty corny. But you understand what I'm saying. God is speaking to us before he does anything. So maybe we shouldn't do anything until we speak to him. So my friends, I'm telling you, this is the answer you've been looking for. It is it's so simple. Okay, it's so simple. My mom used to always say, my grandma used to always say, keep it simple, stupid. Use the KISS method. Keep it simple, right? When we keep it simple and we pray, we praise, we repent, we pray for others, and we pray for ourselves, I promise you there will be transformation in your life beyond all imagination. You won't believe it. You won't understand where it came from. Ideas for your business will happen. You don't think you have time for prayer. You don't have time not to pray because the solutions in your life sometimes have to do with God's hand against you. Things will fall apart in your business. Things won't work because you're not connecting with him. You're taking all the glory. He wants it back. He's creating a gap and the gap is things going wrong so that when you recognize the gap, you'll get back to praying. Well, guess what? If we just start praying, maybe there won't be a gap. Maybe the bridge is already there in the quiet time, in the quiet place. Even the Messiah, the creator of the universe, came in the form of a man. And before he did anything, ladies and gentlemen, he spent his time in prayer. I'm here to tell you, don't ever say prayer isn't helping me. Prayer is not making a difference. The moment you say that, you've become an agnostic. You become an atheist. You become the very enemy of the Lord God. You've literally told God, don't answer my prayers because you don't work. You're not there. Do not get to a place where you are requiring God to manifest or and manifest and answer your prayers in your time period. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's about recognizing the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the sovereign God, King of the universe in your life. And whether or not he ever answers your prayer the way that you want him to, give him your all, my friend. Give him your all. All right, my friends, I'm Jim Staley. With Passion for Truth Ministries, it is so awesome to spend with you this short amount of time, a little longer than I want it to be, 30 minutes, oh my goodness. But I pray that God blesses you and keeps you, and I pray that when you take on this challenge, whenever you see this and wherever you see it, get on your knees and God will transform your life. Shalom, shalom, everyone. I'm Jim Staley, and I'll see you in the next video.